What's up guys? Welcome to Straight From The Chest. My name is Justin Groth. Guys, I'd just like to welcome you to another episode. If you view me for any length of time, I appreciate you. You already know that. If you're new, welcome. This is a personal development podcast. Hopefully you gain something from it. Uh, man, I want to uh, share something real quick with you, to, with you today. I was at the gym and there was <clears throat> there was uh, uh, someone that told me that they listened to my podcast and they said, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I listen to your podcast occasionally. I'll, I'll put it on when I'm when I'm um, just doing something around the house or and I and I was so crazily flattered by that. And I don't I don't mean like I, 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 I was flattered and I was embarrassed at the same time. And I don't know if you've, that's ever happened to you. Something it was, it was said to you that was flattering but embarrassing at the same time. Because I always, well at least I, I try to be as transparent as I can be on this podcast. I mean, I'm not gonna tell you everything in my life. I'm not gonna tell you everything that I think. I, I, it's just, it's, it, it is, some stuff is meant to be censored, even on social media. Um, and even with the podcast like this, but when it comes to myself and, and, and I'm not going to put everything out there. I'm not going to leave everything on the table. And so I, I guess what I'm trying to say is the stuff that I do lay on the table, some of it is vulnerable. Um, some of it I speak from a, from a stance of humility. And so when, when I know that somebody possibly knows those things, even though it seems like it's a contradiction, me saying this because I'm putting it out to the public and I put it on my Instagram medium and I let anybody, and I'm on Apple, Stitcher, SoundCloud, anybody can listen to it if they'd like. But it's still, I, I, it's almost like I, even though I'm not private and I'm, it's immensely public, I still speak as if it's private, as if no one's listening. And so the fact that somebody does listen, and I mean, not just somebody, I'm sure there are multiple people that listen and I'm grateful for you. The fact that you know now <laughs> certain things about maybe me or the way that I think, it's still kind of embarrassing. And here's a little fact about me. I won't ever, ever, ever talk about my podcast to somebody. I will never say, hey, I got a podcast. You should listen to it. That Those words will never come out of my mouth. And I just, because I feel embarrassed. And why do I feel embarrassed? I'll tell you why. Because I don't feel I'm good enough yet. I don't feel like I'm good enough for you to listen to me. I don't feel like I'm going to probably say anything of merit, anything of value that you're going to deem um, important and that you could receive and apply in your life, even though that is in and of itself another contradiction because that's what the podcast is about. But it doesn't mean that I still, that I, that I'm, even though I'm putting it out there, even though I'm doing it repetitively week in, week out to a week, it doesn't mean that I still think it's good enough yet. It doesn't mean that I think I'm good enough yet. I'm just doing this because this is a part of the process. And this is a way for me to get out of my comfort zone. Because most of you who know me, you don't know that from a young age, I used to just talk to myself. So you think that this is new to me. This shit's not new. I've been exercising this muscle for fucking years, but I'm just now putting it out to the public. And even though I still don't think I'm good enough yet to be listened to, it doesn't mean that I'm going to stop doing this or I'm going to stay in a hole for the rest of my life, not doing something just because I don't think I'm good enough yet. I'm going to come out baggage and all and just keep doing it and say, this is what I'm, this is what I'm, I, I feel ignited to do and I can't not do it. Even if no one listens, even if no one takes anything from it, because that's the way I think in my head. I still think that nothing of what I say, even the way I deliver it, can be of value to some people or to most people. 
And then I'm not denuding myself of the characteristics that are, that are infused in me or that are implicit in my being. I'm just simply saying, I still think I'm not that good yet. And I still, and I think I'll always think that, but that in and of itself is a driving force that keeps me perpetuating this narrative. And I'm going to continue it until something pops something. I don't know, I don't know how it's going to pop. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to continue doing this thing or things that are associated with it and like it until something pops. I had a client today, not show up for his appointment. And one of my other, the client that was after him said, Oh, so you didn't have another client? And I said, no, nah, he didn't show up. Was he just no show? I said, uh, he, I think he just forgot. He texted me actually later and said he forgot. And I, I figured he did. And I said, it sucks for him. I said, it sucks two times. It sucks because he missed out on a workout and it sucks because I got paid. Now let's think about that. When you miss out on something, even if it's something that you put as a discipline in your life, and you do it because you know it's making you better. And let's say you, you forgot. Okay, that sucks, you forgot. Are you gonna make it up? Or are you just gonna let it slide? The ones that make it up or the ones that don't miss that stuff and keep going and keep pressing into the discipline or the responsibility, even if they don't like doing it. Because I'll be honest, if it's working out, most people don't like working out with me. They don't like working out, period. That's why they hire me most of the time because they need accountability and they need programming and they need direction and they need queuing and they need, and they need just charisma and they need fucking productivity. And if they don't have that, then what's the point of working out? So they hire somebody to do that or to do that with them and to provide that service, that service, right? Okay. So, if you don't though, press into the thing that you're supposed to do, or you don't press into the thing that you know is progressing you, it's making you a better version or a better human being, not only to yourself, but the people around you. If you don't do it, or you miss a day, it sucks for you. It sucks because you missed out on an opportunity to be better that day. You could have been better, but maybe you don't think about it like that. Maybe you think of it like, well, this is this, you know, I kind of skipped out on that chore. <sighs> That's cool. No big deal. I didn't really want to work out anyways, or I didn't want to really write that, write that paper anyways. I didn't really want to, I don't know, fill in the blank, a specific discipline that you carry, that you, that you that you formulate yourself that's there to make you better. That's there to actually cause you to, to see what you're made of and to evolve you. And so when you miss out, on even if it's one day that sucks. And for this particular gentleman, it sucked twice. I don't feel bad. Well, I do actually, but I don't feel bad. He has, he's the, he's the owner of his own body. He needs to be able to, he needs to be able to put it in his phone and make it a priority. And I'm sure he did, but he got, he got lost in, in his work and all that. And he's a busy guy. I get it. And I'm, this is no, this is no foul on his end. I'm just saying it sucks. So I guess I do feel for him. It sucks because I know that if I missed a workout, I feel like shit. And I also know that if I got money taken out of my pocket in the same token, I feel like even more shit. So sucks twice, but even more of a reason why you need to keep up on this process. Even if nothing is moving, nothing is happening. It doesn't mean you abdicate your discipline. You abdicate your responsibility. It means if anything, you keep going even more, you put more coal into the furnace. And you fire up that locomotive even more. You just have to. I mean, a lot of it's giving you meaning and purpose in the, in the process, 
but it's giving you an aim and that becomes your pursuit. And then if you don't have that, I mean, what are you as an individual? What are you as a human being? What are you contributing to the world? Moreover, what are you contributing to yourself or to people around you? I mean, fuck the world right now. Who are you contributing to around you? Because it starts with them. You're not going to touch the world if you don't touch the people that are closest to you. So if you can't make an impact on people that are right next to you, don't even worry about the world. It's like it reminds me of the Monopoly game. So many people want to fucking land on Park Place or Boardwalk. You want to land on Park Place and Boardwalk and f*** the entire game, but you're not willing to land on Baltic first and then Tennessee Avenue and buy those shits so you can kind of control the board in that direction and then work, work your way up to Boardwalk. Everyone wants to just land on fucking Boardwalk right away. But you don't value the process that it takes to get there. And that's going to Baltic and Tennessee and being in the process because you're owning Tennessee and Baltic. Baltic's like 60 bucks. You want to own Park Place. You want to own the big guys. I understand. But you've got to earn that. You can't just, and if maybe you luck out. But chances are, if you luck out, you're not going to know what to do even when you do get there and do have the chance to buy it. And then possibly you might lose it. You see how the process is imperative. It's imperative to run this game all the way through. And that might mean you're not going to make it till you're fucking 50. Maybe. You're 20. You can't, you can't see how you can make it another three years or four years doing the same thing in your 20. I got news for you. Tyler Perry was fucking broke at 20. 51 is 1.4 billion. Not to mention everything he's done in the process to gain that 1.4 billion. All the impact he's made in the process and the integrity that he's actually consumed himself with getting there 31 years are you willing to put in that type of time to get to that type of level now not everybody's a tyler perry but not everybody is a you you have something in you that can be equivalent or even greater than what tyler perry has you don't know because you're not willing to run this process and buy Baltic first. Instead, you towed around with an entitlement thinking that you deserve to be on boardwalk first. Fuck you. You don't deserve shit. You deserve to run your race. You deserve to run this process. And the process is going to suck. It's going to suck sometimes. There are far worse days than better days in your life. The, the, actually, it's stunning the ratio of shit days or shit experiences to good, and good experiences is not even comparable. You have far worse things going on in your life, even if your perspective is optimal, which is horseshit to begin with because reality is not always and ladders and windows and tootsie rolls. There's far worse things that happen in life than good things. Even if your perspective is optimal. I'm sorry. But that doesn't mean that the good times are going to not outweigh the bad because they are. You could have a thousand little losses. One win will just annihilate all those little losses. It'll all be worth it. The one loss, the one time that you're called to a new level, that's worth all the thousand little losses that you had prior. And you know I'm right. If it's happened to you, you know that feeling. You know I'm right.
You can't stand the fact that all these losses, they're consuming your day to day. But I'm here to tell you that if you keep pedaling through the losses, all you need is one win. All you need is one win, but you got to go through all the Baltic and Tennessee avenues, all the little losses or little minor gains to get to the big boardwalk. But the boardwalk is coming. It's coming. It's been coming. If you haven't seen it, it's because you're not ready yet. And you better, you better thank God that he hasn't given you the boardwalk because you would have just fucking lost it anyways. You're not ready yet. If you were ready, shit would have already happened. But that doesn't discount the fact that you're still refining right now. You're still becoming resilient, more resilient. You're developing perseverance. You're developing grit. You're developing all these functional and practical elements and mental constructs that you need to when you're at boardwalk, you stay there. Don't discount your process. You need it. Done.